Hello and welcome. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and this is the 2021 Toyota Corolla SE. This is the 12th generation of Corolla and these cars aren't new for the 2021 model year, but Toyota has made a few changes for 2021 and they sent over a fairly interesting version of the Corolla for us to check out. So let's get into what's new for 2021. We'll talk about what this particular car is and then we'll get it out on the road and see how it is to drive. And before we get into all that, please take a second, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We really appreciate your support, and the more of it we have, the more fun we can do with new cars like this Corolla, fun older cars, motorsports, that's why we're here. So please take a second and subscribe. With that, on to the Corolla. So like I said, the changes for the 2021 Corolla are fairly minor. The first being in the infotainment system. Every Corolla that has come out in this 12th generation has supported Apple CarPlay, but they have not supported Android Auto. So if you want that full infotainment experience powered by your phone, you've had to wait if you had an Android smartphone. Well now, for 2021, you can plug in your Android smartphone and have Android Auto on the infotainment. The second thing that Toyota has done is they've added two more airbags to every 2021 Corolla. Just adds a little bit more safety, and that is on every model, not just the SE trim or certain other trims. The third thing that Toyota has done is added the equivalent of a TRD trim level to the 2021 Corolla, and they're calling it the Apex Edition, and that is because they're using that term as kind of a nod to the heritage of the Corolla from back in its rear-wheel drive days in the mid-1980s. So the Corolla Apex is not this car. This is the Corolla SE, but the Apex gives you a more performance-oriented Corolla. You get a different suspension. You get different wheels and tires. The tire is going to be a little bit stickier. You get a little bit of a body kit. You get a rear spoiler. And in very, very rare cases, you get a manual transmission. They're only making a hundred and some of the Corolla Apexes with a six-speed manual. Most of them come with a continuously variable transmission, just like most of the other Corollas. Now, I mentioned this is the Corolla SE, not the Apex, but it is an interesting version, and that's because this one also has a six-speed manual transmission. Yes, you don't have to get the Apex version of the Corolla to get a manual, but if you get the sedan, it must be the SE trim. The SE trim kind of splits the difference between the lower trims of the Corolla. You've got L and LE, then you've got this SE, then you have XSE and XLE. And those go from lowest trim level, lowest tier, to the most equipped all the way on the right with that XLE. Now they do also offer a Corolla Hybrid, which we're not gonna be talking about today. Those are a completely different drivetrain altogether, but what we are talking about is the gas-powered Corolla. Now, if you're looking for a stick shift and a Corolla, and you like the utility or the looks of the hatchback, you can also get the stick shift on the Corolla hatch, also as an SE, or only for the hatchback, the XSE. So if you're looking for a little bit more from a features and content perspective, and you want that six-speed stick, head on over and purchase a Corolla hatchback instead because you can get the stick shift there in the XSE. The biggest difference with the XSE is that it's gonna add heated front seats and the seats will be covered in soft text, which is Toyota's form of leatherette. Anyway, back to the Corolla SE sedan. Like I said, this one is gonna be fairly rare. It is a six-speed manual, not the CVT like most of them have. Every Corolla SE is going to have the more powerful of the two gas-only drivetrains. There is a lower-powered model that comes on the lower trim levels, but when you step up to the SE and above, you get the bigger engine, and it's a two-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder that makes 169 horsepower at 6,600 RPM and 151 pound-feet of torque, a little lower in the rev range, around 4,400 RPM. So, sounds punchy enough, and the Corolla SE with the six-speed is actually fairly lightweight. It only weighs 3,055 pounds. So, thankfully, it's not some big porky car underneath. It is fairly lightweight, and 169 horsepower is not that bad for a car of this size. It is still going to be a fairly high power-to-weight ratio, which means every horsepower that this engine makes has to drag around a certain amount of weight. And in the case of the 2021 Corolla SE with the six speed, it weighs 3,055 pounds and makes 169 crank horsepower. And that gives you a power to weight ratio of about 18 pounds per horsepower. So for every horsepower that the car makes, it has to drag around 18 pounds of car before you sit down in it. So just something you can use as a tool to compare different cars for what will feel faster in certain cases, because horsepower is one figure, but you also have to consider curb weight. 
So that is the engine of the 2021 Corolla SE with the six-speed manual. Now, an important thing to note with the six-speed manual, Toyota calls it an IMT, that stands for Intelligent Manual Transmission, and all that means is it's got automatic rev matching. So if you are driving and you have IMT turned on, and you go to downshift, it will raise the revs so you don't have to blip the throttle on your own. It's great if you're newer to a manual transmission or you're just looking for a little bit of help while you're driving, say, in heavier traffic. And the Corolla SE's stick shift also comes with an automatic brake hold function, which is, again, great if you're driving in the city and you're going to be stopped on some hills. You don't have to slip the clutch, dump the clutch, do anything too crazy to get started. We'll get into all that in just a minute, showing you how this thing drives. Now, every Corolla rides on the same sort of suspension. It's a McPherson strut setup up front and a multi-link suspension out back. There's no twist beam here, and it's the same suspension on every Corolla. Tyler recently reviewed the 2021 Hyundai Elantra, which would be the competitor to the Corolla, and he actually uncovered that there's two or three different suspension setups for the Elantra based on which trim level you choose. Toyota's kept it simple. They all get the same setup here. And so those are the basics of what's new for 2021 with this Corolla and what is so interesting about this 2021 Corolla SE and that six-speed stick. So final piece of this whole puzzle is MSRP. Buyers of cars like this are typically fairly price conscious. And this one comes in just shy of $24,000, which I think is fairly well priced for what you get. Like I said, this is not the base model of car. A lot of other companies both in the past and today, if you want that six-speed manual, you have to get the base model trim, which is kind of a bummer for those of us who want to row our own, but also have some options here. So I really appreciate the fact that Toyota offers the mid trim, which is actually pretty well equipped, or if you get the hatch, you can get that XSE and have a couple more options thrown in there. So with all that, let's get behind the wheel of this 2021 Corolla and see how it is to drive. All right, so driving the 2021 Toyota Corolla SE with six-speed manual. Uh, first of all, apologies if uh, I seemed a little rushed standing outside the car. It is cicada season in Northern Virginia and DC, and after 17 years, they are out in force and they are attacking anything that moves and some things that don't, including me standing in front of a Corolla. So uh, apologies there, but we're in the car. Let's talk about it. So like I said, the SE with the six speed gets the bigger of the two engines that are on offer, and that is 169 horsepower made all the way at the tippy top of the rev range at 6,600 RPM and 151 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. I say the tippy top of the rev range because the tachometer in here has an indicated red line right at 7,000 RPM. So you definitely are gonna be winding this thing all the way out. Whether you think it's happy about it or not is up to you. Now, once you're on the move, the transmission I think is pretty decent. It is not gonna be a sports car transmission, but the throws are a pretty good length. They are not necessarily super notchy or super mushy. It's easy to find every gear. And they're connected to a clutch that is pretty lightweight in its feel. So you're not gonna have a sore left leg if you're driving in traffic, if you're commuting or something. The clutch take up is definitely pretty easy to work with. And you know, I think this is a perfectly fine commuter car if you're dealing with some traffic here and there, you're not gonna be bothered by it. Now, once you're on the move more at speed like this, it is certainly easy to rev match a downshift with your own foot. The pedals are actually pretty well spaced for the sake of heel and toe if you've got bigger feet. I can't comment for some of the smaller footed among us, but they're doing okay for me. And of course, Toyota includes this IMT button, which they call the whole transmission an intelligent manual transmission, which is just a marketing way to zhuzh up a six-speed manual transmission. But what it means is if you push the IMT button, it turns on automatic rev matching on your downshifts. So if you are, in my case, in third and want to go to second, all you have to do is put the clutch in, pull the shifter towards the gear you desire, and it will blip the throttle to get to the revs that it thinks are appropriate. So let the clutch out and that's it. I did not touch the throttle there. It just did it on its own. Now you might've noticed it sounded a little lazy blipping the throttle. And I think the throttle feel in general in this car is lazy. It's kind of tough around town if you're, if you're trying to leave a stop sign or a red light because the initial tip in that first little bit of pedal travel is really dead. It takes a lot of throttle to overcome and get the 
the throttle open a little bit to get you moving. So it's hard to be smooth right away when you drive this car. But once you're used to it, it's not so bad. Um, unfortunately, there's no sport button or sport mode to sharpen up the throttle response. So you kind of get what you get. The other button that is down here though is for the auto brake hold, which has been really a godsend in certain parts of the city where it's hilly. Um, you don't have to deal with the three pedal dance with your feet to avoid rolling back on a hill. You know, you can kind of burn up the clutch doing that or just get really nervous if you're newer to stick shift and the auto hold works really, really well. So pulling out here, giving it the beans in traffic. You know, it's not the fastest thing, but it feels pretty sprightly. And it's a, a similar power to weight to some other cars we've reviewed lately. And the one I most recently drove with a similar power to weight was the Ford Bronco Sport, which I actually thought felt kind of slow. And that was an automatic. So it's interesting the effect that rowing your own gears can have on the feeling of a car's quickness. You know, you're not gonna consider this thing fast, but it's, it, it, it's, sprightly enough. It's uh, it's enough to keep you entertained, assuming your expectations are not something ridiculous. And as far as handling is concerned, obviously you need to temper your expectations. This is not going to be an outright sports car, but I do think it's fun enough on a back road if you remember that, you know, the tires in particular are going to have sort of low limits and the suspension kind of is what it is. It's not set up to be, you know, a, a tail happy autocross car but you can certainly you know give it a downshift throw it in play with the revs a little bit and it'll work it's it's pretty good and you know you it feels pretty confident uh tossing it through some lighter you know sweeper type curves anything tighter and you're going to get some tire squeal and it's worth mentioning it is a little noisy in here especially when you're letting the engine rev high like I am you know this is 5,000 rpm right here because I'm engine braking I'm having fun with these curves that's the whole point of a manual but the Corolla again is not a luxury car it just is what it is and uh you know it, it all suits the character this car is definitely a little more fun when you're willing to put your foot into it and push it just a little bit. If you're trying to drive with a super light foot, you know, it's not going to feel super engaging. You're, you're going to wonder, why did I buy the manual if I'm just, you know, slugging around in traffic? This isn't particularly fun because, you know, it isn't. But when you get it out on a road like this or through a sweeping off ramp or something, it is entertaining enough to where it's worth having the manual. The manual is good enough that I think it's entertaining. All right, so final thoughts on the 2021 Corolla SE with six speed. Would I buy the six speed over the CVT if I were in the market for a Corolla? Uh, yeah, I would. It is good enough. I've got some minor you know, irritation, especially with the, uh, the throttle tip in. I wish the clutch pedal had a little less travel. I wish the throttle was a little more uh, eager to please, but those are minor things in the grand scheme of it. I do think the Corolla is entertaining enough if you're going to be on, you know, fun enough roads and if you like driving a stick. And if you're worried that it's going to be too difficult in traffic, this is not going to be that difficult to drive. And of course, it's worth mentioning kudos to Toyota for making the stick shift available in not just one body style, but two, not just one trim level, but two, and not just the base model car. You can still get some stick shifts on other vehicles and you have to get the base model or only certain equipment. This Corolla SE, I think, is very well equipped for what it is. The only thing I would like is heated seats because I'm bougie like that and I could get them if I picked the XSE hatchback instead of the SE sedan. So it is out there and they come in some nice colors. So please, 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 if you're one of those hashtag save the manuals type people, and you're in the market for a car like this, you need to put your money where your mouth is now. You cannot wait to go do it three years from now when these things are all a few years old and half the price because the market responds to what the consumers buy. And if you're not buying a stick shift car new, they're going to continue to die off as they already have been. So that's my little soapbox. I'm gonna get off of it. But if, if you wanna keep the manual transmission around and, and save it as some people are trying to do, just driving old cars doesn't really accomplish that. You have to go buy the new ones that are offered in a six speed, or in some cases, a seven speed. Is the six speed in this car good enough to merit your consideration or your purchase? Absolutely. Do I think the car is well equipped? Absolutely. Do I like driving it enough for what it is? 
100% yes. Is it worth your consideration? Yeah, head over to a showroom. If you like a six-speed manual, it's worth a drive. All right, and that is it for this review of the 2021 Toyota Corolla SE with six-speed manual transmission. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on our social media, Facebook and Instagram, at OutMotorsports, and head on over to OutMotorsports.com. We've got a whole community of LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors over there, and we would love to connect with you as well. Until next time, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.